Right. So I, I'm sure you remember last week we started a discussion on the economic impacts of the coronavirus alleviation program. I'm sure you know by now that government has approved or parliament has approved the 1.2 billion cities uh, for uh, the various interventions announced by President Ekufuado. And that will be taken on by Finance Minister Keno Foyata. Um, this morning we are discussing the economic implications of this. Also know that last week President Ekufuado announced some interventions regards access to electricity. Karen Kinsley Mate joins us now with details. Good morning. Good morning, Ethelon. Thanks for having me. Right. Let's look at the fiscal sustainability of this coronavirus alleviation program. I'm sure you know that Ken Ferreira is asking for us to review the Fiscal Responsibility Act that says that we can't go beyond 5% of our revenue. Yes. Um, um, at this point, we don't have a choice because and um, you recall that um, I think it was two weeks or so earlier when he made the presentation on the assessment of the economic impact of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. It was discovered that if you continue the status quo or do your baseline focus, what you are likely to see is that the fiscal deficit in the overall terms would go up to 7.8% of GDP from 4.7% target for 2020. Right. That's if nothing is done at all. Mm -hmm. Now, after implementing or proposing the measures to help correct or mitigate the, the problems, mm -hmm. the fiscal deficit will reduce from 7.8% to 6.6%. Okay. Now, at 6.6%, that is still above the 5% limit. Yes. And also, the primary balance will still remain in deficit when the Fiscal Responsibility Act mandates us to run a surplus. Mm. So then, at this point, there is nothing we can do but to suspend the Fiscal Responsibility Act, at least for this year. Okay. Thankfully, Section 3.1 of the Fiscal Responsibility Act allows us to do that in the event of a health pandemic leading to a uh, fourth major leading to the declaration of a state of emergency. And mm -hmm. I would argue that the, the lockdowns across the country can be equated to a state of emergency, which will drastically affect revenue collection. And so that section allows the minister to suspend the act, at least for this year. Mm -hmm. So how do we go about uh, this uh, coronavirus alleviation program so we don't, you know, mess up our, you know, reserve, if you like? Well, um, there is nothing to tell about the gap that will be created. There is no funding gap that will be created. Based on the numbers that have been created and that have been uh, uh, presented, we would notice that there has been an increase in the fiscal deficit from 18.9 billion cities uh -huh. to now provisionally around 25.5 billion cities. Okay. Which is given as a 6.6% of GDP. Yes. Now, that increased funding gap, how do you fund it so that we don't throw the fiscal outlook out of control? Mm -hmm. That is a big question. Now, I would say that the best way to do that is to look for funding sources that are concessional. In other words, funding sources that do not impose expensive or high interest rates on the state. Okay. Because the interest cost itself is another source of debt sustainability or otherwise. Okay. So when you look at ways to, to close this 25 billion to this gap, it must be funding sources that are concessional, that gives you a lot of room to maneuver in terms of uh, either repayment or grant, you know, so that you don't have to impose or strain the fiscal so much. And okay. I just a one or two or a few measures that the, the, the government is looking at. First of all, we have our own funding, mm -hmm. which is the Petroleum Holding Fund. Right. Starting with the Ghana Stabilization Fund. Uh -huh. Which you are aware they want to lower the cap or have lowered yes. the cap from, from 300 to 100 million dollars. Yes. Million dollars. Mm. Now, that is going to make available immediately 219 million dollars. Yes. That's equivalent to 1.2 billion cities. And that would immediately start to fund the stabilization, uh, the alleviation program. Yes. Now, beyond that, other measures are to get funding from the World Bank and the IMF, mm -hmm. and professional term, which is good, because that's what I was saying earlier, that it might be funding that is concessional, so that you don't exert strain to pay back 
with high interest on the fiscal. Mm -hmm. So you'll be getting funding from the IMF and the World Bank on concessional terms, which will add up to some 4.8 billion cities. Mm -hmm. That should also help, help. the alleviation program. Mm -hmm. Then you also have a situation where the minister has said that they are engaging pension funds and asset managers to accept up to 200 basis point reduction in rates on treasury bills. Mm -hmm. Now, if you watch the development in the rules of treasury bills over the last two weeks, mm -hmm. it goes a down on a down turn. And at the moment, the 91 day is around 13.9 percent. Okay. Which is down from the 13.75 percent it was before the coronavirus hit. Mm -hmm. And so we are seeing a, a, a gradual reduction even in borrowing from the open market. So then even if government borrowing from the open market, which I expect to be limited because it is not going to come free. Mm -hmm. Even that one will attract lower interest rates. Those are mm -hmm. what is happening now. Absolutely. Then besides that, there is also going to be engagement with the Bank of Ghana mm -hmm. to defer interest payments that the government will have to give to the Bank of Ghana until 2022 and beyond. Mm -hmm. That is going to free cash for government, mm -hmm. at least for 2020. And the estimated cash is 1.2 billion cities. Right. And finally, but not the only point, is that government is expecting to cut expenditure on capex, capital okay. expenditure, Cutting expenditure. and services. Mm. combined to the tune of another 1.2 billion cities. Mm. So, all in all, financing of this coronavirus alleviation program, you would realize, is coming from concessional sources, mm -hmm. low cost funding because of the decline in interest rates, as well as expenditure mm. calibration or reprioritization, okay. so that we move money away from, say, KPEX. You know, this year was initially declared as a year of wage. Why would you want to construct roads when there be no, there might be no human beings alive to, to use the roads? So right. let's use now the money for health programs and this alleviation program. Right. And so this is the reorganization of the fiscal mm. program to help fund the alleviation program. But again, it is important to emphasize mm. because you mentioned earlier that the president announced a lot of relief measures, like the yes. utility relief mm. measures and so on mm. and so forth. Mm. We're good. Because we need some of these relief measures. So these are these are these are interventions you think that could could mm. right? Mm. It is within the six point six percent of GDP that we have now. So we'll help. what I would expect is that there will be collaboration, which I know is going on between the Ministry of Finance, mm. the Treasury, and the government. Mm. In other words, the presidency, right. so that we know what. Uh, our funding sources are available, so we don't go beyond that because there will be life after COVID. Mm, mm. And then we will need to continue to run the deficit and our numbers in a sustainable manner to help investors retain their capital here. Absolutely. Karish Kinsley Mate, we are grateful that you made time to speak with us this morning. Karish Kinsley Mate is a senior research analyst with Data Bank Research helping us to understand what government should be doing as we try to work around this coronavirus alleviation program. I don't know what you make of that. Send us your views and comments on all our social media platforms. I have a release from the African Union I wanted to read to you uh, and with some of the interventions they are proposing, but we don't have much time on our hands. We'll be back with more. Please stay.